Hey everybody, it's Master Galageist here, bringing you my review of the latest episode of Outcast, Close to Home. So, I overall really enjoyed this episode, and really been liking this series so far. And, we got kind of like two really good things in this episode. Kind of the slow burn still going through, because we don't know the overall plan yet of the demons, but we're getting a kind of clear picture, and then like some really quick plot advancement at the end for a really kind of effective cliffhanger to lead into the season finale. So, we get in the beginning this kind of weird scene that we see between Megan, like, picking up the glass that she had crushed in that one end of that one episode and kind of, like, cutting her hand with it. It was really kind of weird showing how that her life is kind of, like, broken apart. And in that way, it's really effective because she's still dealing with the Donnie and raping her and everything so many years later, showing that this trauma... Trauma is an important part of the show because it shows that even after the deed is done, it still lingers and affects people long after you would think it would. And we keep kind of seeing her kind of <laughs> weirdness going on throughout the rest of the episode. So we kind of get some interesting plot points that are coming up through this. Now, the big main thing was Reverend Anderson and... He's kind of trying to figure out how to undo the damage he has done, but we've seen that the Reverend's been kind of pushed past his limits. So he's kind of like going through town trying to find what's going on with the church and all that, trying to go to his like old people that he had worked with the community and kind of seeing what's going on. So he goes to the deacon meeting that he's told about, and he's like, telling him to go, and who's there? Sydney, donating to the church, and like being smug and everything, and showing that he's in a Depending upon what his positioning is and what exactly the demons are, he is an effective tactical thinker. He has dealt with people like the Reverend before, and granted, he might not know the Reverend that much, but he has figured out how to push his buttons and just needled him to the point that the Reverend attacked him, and, of course, they called Giles in, and he's like, there's no need to press charge, and he's like, nope, I'm pressing charges, and like, wow, and I love Giles as a character. He is a great police chief, but he's also a really good character. He he does, he wants to do what is right. Even though some things he might legally be held up against, if it's going against the greater good, he's going to do something different. Because he took the Reverend to the police station, let him go, and be like, well, just call me when you're, when you need help. It's like, yes, I want to see how effective he is with what's going to be happening with these demons and everything, because he's smart. He knows what he's doing, and I think he'd be a really good tactician to have on their side. Because the Reverend, he has the lore and everything that could help them possibly with the demons, and also holy water and the connection to the church and God and all that. But we've seen that he has a hard, he has a hard time kind of doing, dealing with that kind of stuff because he's been shaken with what's been going on. So his face's a little rocky and he's been kind of arrogant to this point. And while that's going on, we see that Lenny and his wife are moving, we're getting ready to move out because Giles had pretty much said, you know, you got to get out of here. And as they're about to, Sydney meets his wife in the restroom and gives her a new initiative because he appreciated the initiative that they had with the camper. So we also see that later on in that they are in this kind of place that they're going to be using for conversions, if you will, when people are like newly possessing how to work out the kinks and have their symbiosis going on. And he, she effectively pretty much gets Lenny to go along with her. We'll have to see how that pans out and if anything kind of weird is going to be going on, if Lenny might have second thoughts or whatnot. Because his whole idea with this is that he's liked it because it's become new and exciting and fresh and reinvigorated his marriage with his wife, even though it's not really his wife anymore. And that got pretty big stuff. So while this is also going on, we've got Kyle who's trying to look for his wife. So he drops his daughter off at Megan's, and she, of course, is home from school, which she's a teacher, and she's kind of sick. And he's pretty much given her the advice that she always gave him. And like, all right. So he goes off kind of trying to figure out where Allison is, gets the help of Mark, so they pretty much break into his old house, trying to look around and see what's going on. He gets some stuff for his daughter, and as he's leaving, his 
wife's mother sees him and is almost freaking out, but he's like, listen, we, I'm not here to hurt her or anything. We're just here to work this through. And then she's talking about like, she's, something's wrong with her. I can't believe this is happening with her. And we find out later that she's in a mental hospital. She's checked herself in and in a, in a place that does not allow visitors. And that's interesting because we, he gets himself to have an audience with her and she's like, I don't trust, you can't protect me from myself. You could protect me from other stuff, but you can't protect me from myself, which means that she has kind of, if not a full recollection, a pretty big recollection of what's kind of going on with her. That she was not in control of herself and was pretty much ready to kill her daughter. And I think that that kind of so showed through with their interactions with the kind of anger and that sense the demon or whatever entity it is was kind of ripped from her. Maybe that residual kind of aggressiveness kind of stayed with her, even though it really wasn't her feelings towards her daughter. And that's kind of an interesting thing, and it will be interesting to see where they kind of take that later on, because Kyle's family is important to him, and he doesn't want to hurt anybody, and he's kind, and he wants to be gentle, but he's had all these like horrible things happening to him, and he's and the way that he has to exercise the demons is to pretty much use his blood and touch people and beat the crap out of the demons to get them out. So it's kind of an interesting juxtaposition with that. I'm hoping that they'll kind of carry something with that forward. And so we leave that kind of there and it's all well and good. We also get the information that Mark and Megan are pregnant and she's kind of freaking out. And that's kind of why she's been puking and kind of feeling under the weather. And Mark's kind of happy for this. Like, I'm in a job interview. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get through this. This will work out. And she's getting kind of good. And Mark's getting kind of good. So we also then get back to Reverend Anderson. And he really needs to figure out and to learn how to control his anger. Because that starts getting to be a really important thing with this. Because he goes out to Sydney, kind of look at what's going on. Saw that Patricia's son was there. And confronts him in Patricia's house where he's staying, which wasn't really that long, because Aaron pushes his buttons, he threatens to whoop his ass, and Patricia tells him, tells him to leave. And of course, then Aaron has to go out and go and be like, there you go, I got you out, my father beat me, but guess what? I beat you. And it's interesting to see how Reverend Anders is gonna, like, evolve past this, because he then goes to Kyle's house, then gotten back, and he's talking about, I've been jealous of you. And he's admitting that. And we've got to do it your way. And we've got to figure out a plan of action because my way's not been, hasn't been working. And it's good to see that, that he's willing to be more of a team with Kyle than he has been so far because he's been pretty much trying to unleash him as a Hulk tactical missile when his stuff isn't working. And then, of course, pulling it back when he's trying to do it himself. So it'll be cool to have more of a teamwork between them and see how their relationship develops now that they've got more equal ground. Because at first it was kind of like Reverend Anderson taking the lead and then Kyle trying to kind of take the lead. And I hope that it leads to something where they kind of do more of a partnership where they're trying to trust and learn with each other. And it's really kind of crazy how this episode ended because... We've kind of got all these things coming together. We've kind of seen Sydney's plans forming. And then we see Megan's taking a shower and she starts freaking out and she starts having the symptoms of being possessed. And it's like, oh God, it's going after, after another member of Kyle's family. And she's kind of freaking out. Mark comes in, she smashes his head into the mirror and glasses lodged in his neck. And then she takes it out and he dies. And it's like, oh my God. And this introduces so many other questions like, she's pregnant. How will that affect the baby? Would that mean she could be have two demons at once? Or will the demon then try and lead through the baby? What kind of developments will that happen? That's some interesting plot devices that could come in and really kind of make important things happening. Because once <laughs> it's going to really affect kind of how you would exercise this demon. Because then at the end of the episode, we get a true kind of cliffhanger where 
Kyle takes his cell phone out because he's getting a call, and it's his daughter saying that it's Aunt Megan, she's sick like mommy, and it ends there, and they're screaming, and it's, how will Kyle, will Kyle be able to save both Megan and the baby? What will happen if he exercises the demon? Would he have, what if he has to hurt her so much that it, it hurts the baby? He doesn't even know she's pregnant. And it's like, oh my god, what's going to be happening with this in the next episode and the finale and all that? And where, what's their big plan? What's going to be happening? It's like, oh my god, this is good. This has gotten really, like, zero to hundred very fast. And I'm just excited to see where this can be going. So, those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.